This is part 100 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss a real-world example of where we could use jQuery sortable widget. So here is what we want to do. We got a question here which we want the user to answer and here is the question. Reorder to match the capital city with their respective country. So here on the left we've got some countries and on the right we've got capital cities. So we want the user to be able to reorder these capital cities to match with their respective country. After the reordering is done, the user can click this check answer button. If the capital cities are ordered correctly, then the background color should change to green. Otherwise, it should change to red. So this question text, the question options on the left, and the answer options on the right, you know, and the answer itself, that's the right answer, all these should be coming from database. So let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. So the first step here is to create four different tables. Now the first table is going to be TBL questions and this table is going to contain the question text and question ID. So we have got two columns there. And look at that, this table at the moment contains just one row. So here we have the question ID and this is the question that we see on the screen, reorder to match the capital city with their respective country. So the question text will be going into this table. And then here we've got question options. So these question options will be going into a different table and that is TBL question options. And this table has got three columns, the question option ID and the option text that is in this case it's going to be country name and the question ID to which that option belong to. So at the moment if you look at the options that we have here we've got four question options, four country names and here is that data USA, India, UK and Australia. So that's the ID for the question option and then we have the country name and the question ID to which these options belong to. So all these options belong to question ID 1 that is this question. And just like question options we need another table to store answer options and here is the table. So here we've got answer options table and again it has got the same set of three columns as that of TBL question options. We've got on answer option ID, option text and the question ID. And here we have the cities okay? and the question ID uh, to which those options belong to is 1. And then finally we need one more table to store the right answer. Okay, so what are we going to do here? We're going to reorder the cities to match with their country, right? So the answer for this would be the correct order of the cities. So within this answer table, we've got three columns, the ID for the answer and the question ID to which that answer belonged to and the actual answer itself, okay? So that's the answer ID and that's the question ID to which the answer belonged to. So this is the answer for question ID 1 and here is the actual answer. So the actual answer order should be 3412 meaning look at that the first country US, USA. So for USA the capital is Washington DC and the ID of that is 3 so it should be first and India capital is New Delhi its ID is 4 so 3 4 UK is London so that should be next should be 1 and for Australia it is Canberra, Canberra 2. Okay, so the right ordering should be 3, 4, 1, 2. Okay, so those are the four tables that we require. I'll have all the script available on my blog. And we need two more stored procedures. So the first stored procedure is going to get all the question data for us by ID. So what do we mean by question data? The question text, the question options, and the answer options. So we need all that data to display that question to the user. So I have a stored procedure here, get question data by ID. And to this stored procedure, we are passing a question ID. And here we are retrieving from the questions table where ID equals at question ID, the parameter that we are passing in. Similarly, we are retrieving the options, the question options for that question and answer options for that question. So three select statements, pretty straightforward stored procedure. And we need another stored procedure and that is to retrieve the answer by question ID. So we pass the question ID and we retrieve the row that matches the question ID that we passed to the stored procedure from TBL answers table. Okay, so this stored procedure to retrieve the answer and this to retrieve the question data. So that's it from the database side. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. 
So here I have an ASP.NET web application project within our web.config file. We have a connection string that is pointing to our sample DB database where we have got all those tables. And since I have already executed these scripts, look at this. When I execute the select statement from all the tables, we have the question data there. We have the option, I mean question options, answer options, and the answer text. Okay. All right, and we have a connection string pointing to that DB. So the next step is to add a web service to our project. So let's go ahead and do that. Add a new item. And we want to add a web service. And let's call this question service. And here we're going to write some ADO.NET code. So I need some namespaces in the interest of time. I've already typed the required namespaces here. So we need system.configuration to read the connection string from web.config file, system.data and system.data.sql client for ADO.NET, and system.web.script.serialization to serialize the data to adjacent string. Okay. So in the interest of time, I have also typed the required ADO.NET code. But before we copy and paste that, let's change the definition of this function. So we are not going to return anything from this function. I'm going to call this get question data. Okay? And let's get rid of that. And we want this script to be callable from JavaScript. So I'm going to uncomment the script service attribute. And within our function, we are going to write ADO.NET code to retrieve question data. Remember, we have a stored procedure which returns us question data by question ID. And here is that stored procedure. So for example, if we pass it question ID 1, notice we get the data related to that question ID, the question text, question options, and answer options. So we want to call that stored procedure and return that data. All right. So we are going to write some ADO.NET code. And in the interest of time, I have already typed that. So let's copy it and paste it in our function. All right, so what are we doing here? Pretty straightforward. We are reading the connection string from web.config file. Now, one important thing that we have forgot to do is we need to create some classes. So the first class that I'm going to create here is answer class. So let's call this answer. And this answer class is going to encapsulate you know this answers table and if you look at the answers table it has got ID question ID and the actual answer so I'm going to have public int ID and this is going to be an auto implemented property so let's have a default get and set accessors and I'm going to have question ID which is also an integer actually the data type is integer and the property name is question ID. Okay? And we need the actual answer, and the answer is going to be string type. And let's call this property answer text. Okay? So this class is going to represent TBL answers table. Now I'm going to create one more class and I'm going to call it option. And in a bit you'll understand the purpose of that class. So let's call this option. And this class is going to encapsulate both the question options table and answer options table. So both of these tables. If you look at those tables, they have got similar columns, ID, option text, and question ID. So I'm going to copy these properties from here just to save some time in typing. And let's paste them here. So we need ID for the option. and we need the option text and the question ID. So we already have question ID and another property is going to be option text. Okay. And now I'm going to create another class. Let's actually name that class. So let's go ahead and add a new class. And let's name this question page data. So what is this class going to do? This class is going to contain the data that our web form needs. So that's why I named this question page data. And what are the properties this class is going to have? Now, what do we need on the page? We need the question ID and question text. We need the question options. 
we need the answer options and we need the actual answer but we'll worry about the answer later okay so for the question itself we need the question text question options and answer options so I'm going to create a integer property let's call this question ID and let's have a default get and set accessors for question ID and I'm going to have a string property which is going to return question text and we need question options and answer options so I'm going to create another public property and this one type is going to be list of option and if you look at the option class that we have just created it's going to represent both the question option and answer option so here the return type is list of option and I'm going to call this question options so that's a list property okay similarly I'm going to have another property and that property is going to be answer options again a list of option okay alright so we have this class question page data now let's go back to our web service that we have just created and if you look at the web service here we are reading the connection string from web.config file and look at this this is very important otherwise we will get a null reference exception so what are we doing here we're creating an instance of question page data because that's the object that we want to return from this function so that's the object we will be serializing to a JSON string and writing it to the output stream All right so we are creating an instance of this class here question page data which we have just created and notice what we are doing here we are initializing question options and answer options to a new list of option otherwise if we try to add to that property you know question options or option answer options without initializing it first we will get a null reference exception so it's important that you initialize these two properties and then we're using the SQL connection object um, I mean we're creating a SQL connection object using this connection string and then we are creating an instance of SQL data adapter and look at what we are executing using that SQL data adapter the stored procedure that we have just created get question data by ID so this is that stored procedure which returns us the question data and this stored procedure has obviously got a parameter and its name is at question ID so since it's a parameter uh, stored procedure we have to tell that to the command object it has got a parameter name of the parameter is question ID and the value for that I'm actually hard coding it in real time you may read it from a query string or you know session variable depends on how you have designed your application but for the purpose of this demo I have hard coded it to one because we know the question ID is one and we are associating that parameter object with the select command of the data adapter object creating a new data set and filling the data set with the result that this stored procedure is going to return and remember when we execute this stored procedure we are going to get three tables back the questions table the question options and the answer options so what are we doing next now we know that this data set is going to contain three tables and look at what we are doing here this question page data object that we have created on the top so that's going to contain the data that our web page needs and it has got question ID and where are we getting the value for that property look at that we are getting it from the first table in the data set so first table first row in that table use the ID column value and convert that to an integer similarly question text is also present in the same row but the column name is question text so we got question ID question text and next we need question options and here look at that we are creating an instance of option object and we are populating the ID option text and question ID and where are we retrieving it from from table 1 that is that's the first table at index 0 that's the second table at index 1 which contains our question options so here we're creating an option object and look at that we are adding that to the question options collection property of our question page data object alright and we are doing a similar thing with answer options answer options are present in the third table which is at index 2 and again we are adding it to the answer options collection property 
of our question page data object. And then finally, what we are doing, we are creating an instance of JavaScript serializer class, and then we are serializing this question page data object to the output stream. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Now let's go ahead and quickly test our web service. So now we should be able to retrieve the question ID, question text, question options, and answer options. So it's still loading. So here we have got at the moment one operation contract. Let's click on that. So we should be able to invoke the web service and we should get the entire question data that we want to display on the web service um, on the page for the user. All right, now we need another function here. So basically at the moment we're only getting question data. We also want to retrieve answer data. So what I'm going to do is make a copy of this one. And let's call this function get answer data. And the same idea, we're going to read the connection string from web.config file. And now we don't need this question page data because we're going to get answer data and we're going to store answer in this answer object. So let's call it answer equals new answer. And again, we are creating a new SQL connection object. And this time, the stored procedure that we want to execute is another stored procedure, which is going to return us answer by question ID. So for example, if we pass it question ID 1, this is going to return us the answer of that question. OK? So that is the stored procedure that we want to call. So let's copy its name and paste it right there. And that's also a stored procedure. So we have to tell that to the command object. And this stored procedure also has got a parameter, and that is question ID. So we are creating that. We are associating with the select command of the data adapter, creating a new data set, filling the data set with the data that we get after executing that stored procedure. And now we have the answer object here, which we want to populate. So answer answer dot question ID. So where are we going to get that from? From tables of zero rows of the column name is going to be question ID. Similarly, we need the answer ID itself. And that is going to come from ID column. Because if you look at the column names here, you know, when we execute that stored procedure, look at that ID, question ID, and answer. So finally, we need the answer text. So dot answer text equals, and that's present in answer column. OK? So we have the answer object that we need. So we don't require these two for each loops here. So let's get rid of those two. And once we have the answer object, we want to serialize that. So let's pass that to the serialize function. Let's save our changes. Let's run this web service one more time. Now we should have two operation contracts. So we have here get answer data. When I click that and when we invoke, we should get answer data. OK, so we have the web service that we are going to use on our page. Now, let's go ahead and uh, you know, write the required jQuery code. So here on the web form, we have our ready function wired up. And on the page, I already have some HTML. So if we view this page in the browser, now visibly, we'll only have check answer button, right? So here, we've got the div element. So basically, this div element is, display, is to display the question text. And we've got an unordered list here to display the question options, another unordered list to display the answer options, and finally, a button to check the answer, whether if it's right or wrong. OK, so now let's go to our ready function. And another thing that I have done here is uh, defined a style for list item. So this is going to display that list item like a block element. All right, so now I'm going to issue an Ajax request. So let's specify our options. So the URL that we want to call 
is this web service question service dot asmx so that's the web service that we want to call so let's go ahead and specify the service name here and within that web service we've got a function we've actually got two functions but the first function that we want to call at this time is get question data so let's go ahead and call that that's the URL that we want to call we want to issue a post request and the type of data that we are expecting is JSON when the request successfully completes this is the function that gets called that's our callback function similarly if there is an error we want to associate another callback function so it's going to receive that error object and let's simply alert the status text alright so when the request completes successfully what is the first thing that we want to do we want to first display the question text and where do we want to display that question text on the page we've got a development right this is the development within which we want to display the question text so I'm going to find that development using its ID and I'm going to use the text function and we have the data object here so data dot question text so that property of the uh, data object should return us the question text so let's go and save our changes reload this page now on the web form we should see the question text so what's our next step the next step is to retrieve the question options and create dynamically list items and append those list items to this unordered list and where are our question options present now if you look at our question page data object which we are serializing to the web page it contains this option question options so that's the property which contains all the options um, that are specific to our question so I'm actually going to use data dot answer options property and I'm going to wrap that using jQuery wrapper and use the jQuery each function so now we are going to loop through each actually it's question option isn't it so we need question options property okay now we want to find the unordered list element so this is where we want to display the question options so let's find that using its ID and to that we want to append a list item right every time we are looping through we want to create a list item and append it to question options so I want to append a list item we want ID attribute because we are going to store the ID of the list item in that attribute so li uh, list item ID equals and we want to get the ID from the question option and we are in a for each loop uh, in an each loop so I can use this keyword here to refer to the element that we are looping through at the moment and that has got ID property which is going to give us the ID of the question option and then what do we want to do we want to close the angle brackets and within the list item what is the text that we want to display the option text so this dot the name of the property is option text how do we know that because within the option object we have got that property option text okay and then finally what do we want to do we want to close the list item all right so let's save our changes and now when we refresh this we should get all the question options as well notice that and for all the question options look at that they're displayed uh, using a different style and that style is specified here right here okay all right now similarly we want answer options so I'm going to make a copy of this one and instead of looping through question options property I want to loop through answer options property and as we are looping through we want to create a list item and append that to answer options unordered list 
so the ID of the answer options is answer options so let's go ahead and specify that right here so let's save our changes now when we reload we should get answer options as well now we have a problem here now we want the question options and answer options to be displayed next to each other okay so to get that I'm going to specify a style for our unordered list so on the page I'm going to include another style for unordered list and all I'm going to specify here is float left so we want them to float left let's save the changes reload this page look at that now they are lined up next to each other but another problem here is we have this check answer button shifting to the right we want that at the bottom right here and to get that I'm going to specify some inline styles for the button so I'm going to set the style attribute and I'm going to set clear style to both and I'm going to make this float left again so these two properties are going to place it where we want it so it's going to come right here so now the UI is similar to what we have here the only thing that's different is the background color of these elements now we want these city names to be sortable these are the answer options so we should be able to reorder them so we want to make them sortable so what I'm going to do now is find the ID of the answer options unordered list and then make it sortable so let's find it using the jQuery ID selector and I am going to make that sortable so let's call the jQuery UI sortable function and let's reload this page now look at this we should be able to sort these now right now we have a couple of problems here first of all we don't want the background color to be you know white like this now since these are sortable items jQuery UI is going to apply a special class to all those list items and to see that class for yourself you know, click on the magnifying glass and look at the list items here notice the list items they've got IDs and the class the special class that jQuery has applied is this UI dash sortable dash handle now what I want to do is change the background color of these sortable elements to uh, maybe gray so that we know that by the color we can sort them so what I'm going to do here is use this class on my page UI sortable handle so within the style section let's specify that class as well dash UI sortable dash handle and I'm going to specify background color gray alright so let's save our changes let's reload this page and look at that now the background color changes to gray and another thing that we want to do is at the moment look at that I'm able to drag it even horizontally we don't want to do that we want to be only able to scroll it um, along the y-axis because this is a vertical list and another problem is notice that the placeholder is a blank white space now let's specify a placeholder class as well okay so to specify the placeholder class I'm first going to create a class for that so I'm going to make a copy of this list item and I'm going to change the name of that to placeholder so it's a class and for the placeholder we don't need cursor we also don't need this list style type instead what I want is a background color and I'm going to set that to silver so within our you know success function here we are making the answers unordered list sortable and I'm going to specify the options here so basically I'm going to say placeholder option is going to be this class name so this is the class that we want to apply so that is the style to apply for the placeholder and I'm also going to specify access option because we want to be able to you know move those items only along y-axis so let's save those changes reload this page now look at this we should get a placeholder notice that we have a placeholder there and I'm able to move them only along the y-axis not along the x-axis alright so now we have everything that we need
okay now when we click check answer button what we want to do we want to check whether if the ordering of these city names is the same as what we have in the DB 3412 that should be the ordering okay so that means when we click the button we want to make another call to the DB retrieve the answer and then match that with the order that we have here and if they match the answer is correct otherwise it's wrong okay so let's go ahead and do that I'm actually going to make a copy of this instead of retyping everything so basically that's closing right there so let's make a copy of that and now we have the button here when we click the button that's when everything should happen and the ID of the button is PT and check so let's find that button using its ID so btn check and what do we want to do we want to associate a click event handler and inside this function I'm going to paste the Ajax that we have just the Ajax code that we have just copied now when we click the button we want to call the same question service but this time we want to call a different function that is get answer data so that's going to return us the answer data so here we're going to specify the function name we still want to issue a post request the type of data that we are expecting is JSON and when the request successfully completes this is the callback function that gets called and this parameter will receive the answer right so I don't need all this so I'm going to get rid of this from here and when there is an error again this is the callback function that gets called now the first thing that we want to do within success callback function is to find the answer that the user has provided so I'm going to create a variable I'm going to call this user answer let's initialize that to an empty string now how do we check I, I mean how do we retrieve the user answer now look at this when we click this check answer button all we want to do is loop through each list item within this answer options list and get the ID attribute value in order okay so and then we want to compare that with the answer that we got from the DB so I want to loop through now these list items so we need to find the answer options ID so that's the ID of the unordered list so within our success callback function here I'm going to find that answer options unordered list element loop through each list item so this is going to return us all the list items now I'm going to use the jQuery each function and loop through each of them so user answer plus equals what are we going to do here we will use this keyword which is going to refer to the list item that we are currently looping over and what we want to do is retrieve the ID attribute value and to that we want to append question mark okay and when we do this the last you know ID value will have a question mark appended at the end but if you look at the answer in the DB the last option does not have a question mark at the end so we need to knock off that question mark in the end so what I'm going to do is user answer equals user answer dot substring so I'm going to use the substring function and retrieve all the characters starting from index 0 that's our start position and we want to do that until the last index of the last comma right so I'm going to again use here user answer dot last index of comma alright now if this user answer is equal to we have the data option data parameter and if you look at what we are going to get this is the property that contains the answer from the DBA so I'm going to compare that with data dot answer text if they match the user answer and the answer that we got from the DB let's quickly alert a message saying correct answer else let's display wrong answer so let's go ahead and run this one more time and look at that at the moment it's definitely wrong answer 
So when I click check answer, look at that, it says wrong answer. And now let's go ahead and order this correctly. So Washington DC, and for India it is New Delhi, UK London, Australia Canberra. So now when we click it, we get correct answer. If we change the order, wrong answer. So it's working as expected, but that's not what we want. Instead of displaying the alert, what we want to do is change the background color of all these list items to green when it's correct or to red when it is wrong. And to do that, I'm going to create two more classes on our page. So here, let's go ahead and create a class, correct answer. And all we're going to do here is change the background color to green and font color to white. Okay. And similarly, let's create another class for wrong answer. So what do we want to do? We want to apply these classes depending on whether it's correct or wrong. So let's copy the class name from here. And within our code, when the answer is correct, this is the piece of code that's executed. So what we want to do is find the, we want to find the selector, find all the list items with an answer options and ordered list and add class and what's the name of the class correct answer okay similarly if it's a wrong answer we want to add wrong answer all right so let's save our changes reload this page and look at this now when we check answer um, it's saying it's correct it's actually applying the wrong answer. So we should be applying this class. So let's look at what we have here. So here for wrong answer, we have to change the background color to red. Okay. All right. Now look at this. When we click check answer, it's the wrong order. So the background color is red. Now let's go ahead and reorder them correctly. Now when we click check answer, look at that. It still doesn't work. And that is possibly because we have applied both the classes already. Look at that. Now let's order this properly. So Washington DC, New Delhi, check answer, green it works. Now let's change the order, check answer. It applies wrong answer, right, uh, correct answer, both the classes now. Now when I you know both the classes are already applied now let's correct it so now it's correct order but when I click check answer it doesn't change the color again why is that that's because these two classes wrong answer and correct answer these are already applied if they're already applied if you try to apply again nothing happens so to fix this what you need to do is if the answer is right now what we want to do is if So if the answer is right, and if wrong answer class is already present, we want to remove that and then add correct answer class. Similarly, if the answer is wrong, we want to remove correct answer class and add wrong answer class. So this is going to fix that. So let's change this to remove class. So we want to remove correct answer class and add wrong answer. So let's save these changes now, reload this page, and look at this. Let's order them correctly. So they are lined up correctly now. Check answer, green. Now if we change the order, red. If we put it back to the right order, now green and red. Um, let's change red. Okay, so now it works as expected. Another thing that I want to do here is look at this as we are dragging it. Now we know that it's a wrong answer and when I'm dragging and until I click this check answer button, the color is not going to change. What we want to do is if I want to, you know, reorder them again and if I start to reorder them, then immediately as soon as I start to drag the first element, what I want to do is put its color back to its original color that is you know gray color 
Okay, so to do that, I'm going to handle start event of the sortable widget. So start event. This will be triggered as soon as we start dragging, and when that event is raised, we want to handle that. So this is the function that gets called. So what do we want to do when we start to drag? We want to remove both of these classes, you know, wrong answer and correct answer. So again, we have to find all the list items within the answer options and ordered list and remove class we want to remove both the classes what are they correct answer and wrong answer all right so let's save our changes reload this page and look at this it's a wrong answer and the moment i start to drag look at that it reverted to its original color okay All right. Thank you for listening and have a great day.